All right, let's do some mathy math. It says solve using long polynomial division or polynomial long division. And it says you must show each step of your process. Well, we're happy to do that because we're going to be proud of our work. We're going to show it off. So this says 6x to the 4th plus 2x to the 3rd minus 7x minus 9, all divided by x plus 8. We're going to rewrite it um, just like this, x plus 8, and then make the box. And I might have to make that a little bit longer. We'll see here. Now, as you copy this down, you got to be careful, right? We want to make sure it goes 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Now it goes 4, 3, but there's no value to the second. So you can leave a space, or if it makes you feel better, you can write plus 0x squared, as you like. It doesn't make a difference. Minus 7x minus 9. And remember, the key here is either leave space or put something here so you remember that, that we need to acknowledge this. Uh, otherwise, your terms, as you go down, you won't be lining up like terms uh, when it comes to the degree of the exponent, and it will mess everything up. So that's why we do this. And, and I'll point that out as we move along. Okay, so the first step, uh, it's pretty much like a four-step process. First step, we ask ourselves, okie dokie, what do I got to multiply this x by for it to become 6x to the fourth? And so we know we just multiplied this x by 6x to the third. And I'm going to line up my terms by degree. So I know that this is going to be 6x to the third. Okay, that's step one. Step two is we multiply down or distribute down. So I say, well, what is 6x third times x? Well, that is 6x to the fourth. You see how I'm very carefully lining up my terms by degree. And then I say 6x to the third times 8. Well, 6x to the third times 8, if you break it down, it's like saying 8 times 6. And you know that 8 times 6 is 48. And so it's like 48x to the third. So I write plus 48x to the third. Okay. The next step is to subtract. So we got to change the signs up here or distribute a negative 1 to this binomial um, so we can subtract. So this becomes a minus and this plus becomes a minus. And this is a good reminder. Remember, subtracting is just like adding a negative. So now we're just like adding negative 48x to the third. Okay? This becomes 0. 6x to the fourth minus 6x to the fourth is 0. That's a good sign when we do this process. And then we say 2 minus 48. So we're going negative, and we're actually going to get a negative 46x to the third. That was step three. Step four, the, the last step of this dance, is to bring it down. So we're just going to bring down this uh, 0x squared. Okay, And you'll see why we did that in a second as we line everything up. Okay, that was the first four steps. So now what we do is we just repeat that process. So the next question is, okay, what does this x have to multiply by to become negative 46x to the third? And so we multiply this x by negative 46x to the second. And that, that's how you get the, the second term in your quotient. Your quotient, you know, the quotient is the answer to a division problem, so this will be for our quotient. Step two, we multiply back down. We're going to take this times x and then this times 8. It's like distribution, and usually we're really good at distribution, so let's think of it in that light because maybe we will uh, we'll nail this step down. So negative 46x squared times x is negative 46x to the third. And then, oh boy, 40, negative 46 times 8. I don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. So we're going to say uh, negative 46 times 8 is negative 368. Okay? So negative 368x squared. Great. Now we're cooking. All right? The next step is to subtract. Okay, so if we're subtracting, it's like we're multiplying this binomial by negative 1, distributing negative 1, distributing negative 1. In other words, just changing the signs. Negative 46x to the third plus 46x to the third is 0. And now I have 0x squared plus 368x squared. So that's just going to be plus positive 368 x squared. And you see here, this is why we left this, this piece here, to make sure that our terms always lined up by degree. And here's something kind of pretty about this when you look at it, because it goes 4, 
three, two, right? It just kind of works its way down vertically. Four, three, two, it's going to go one, zero, okay? So that's how you know you're on the right track, because everything lines up nicely. So the last step, step four, bring it down. We get negative 7x. Okay, start the process over. Ask yourself, what does this x have to multiply by to become 368x squared? We we'll just multiply it by 368x. And look, you can see it again. This is x to the first, to the first, to the first. So now we're, we're all lined up nicely. This is how you know you're on the right track. Okay, so we say 368x times x. That gives us 368x squared. And then we do 368 times 8. Again, I don't know that. So 368 times 8, 2,944. So we get plus 2,944 right there, x. Ta-da! All right, the next step is to subtract. So I change the signs like we were talking about. 368x squared minus 368x squared is 0. That's a good sign. See how the zeros line up? Do, 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 do. That means you're on the right track. And now we have negative 7x, and we're going to take from that uh, 2,944 more negatives. Now, sometimes when we add negatives, we tend to get confused. Um, and that's okay if conceptually that's something we lock up on. So the answer is going to be negative uh, 2,951x. But if you're not sure about that, just don't, don't. Be too proud to bust out the old calculator, right? So you have negative 7, and you're going to subtract from it. Or if you want to practice adding a negative, plus a negative 2944, right? There you go, negative 2951. So we say minus 2951. X. Great, you subtracted. And the last step is to bring it down. Voila. Okay, we ask ourselves the question again. What does x have to multiply by to become negative 2,951x? Well, that's just negative 2,951. And let me take a second here to point something out. Look at your quotient so far. 3, 2, 1, 0. We're on the right track. Things are making sense. This is, this is good news, okay? Okay, so we brought it down, we multiply here, so the last step is to multiply back down. Um, it's like distributing. So you say, well, what is negative 2,951 times x? Well, that is negative 2,951x. And then you say, well, what is negative 2,951 times 8? I certainly can't do that in my head. So negative 2,951 times 8. Woof, we get a big old number. That's okay. We get negative... 23,608. Last step, we change the sign so we can subtract. These cancel. You can quickly check. So x to the first, x to the first, 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 ending in a zero. We're doing great. And then you say, well, what is negative 9 plus 2,300? I'm sorry, 23,608. So if you look at it and you say, well, that's going to be 23,599, you would be correct. But if you're not sure, use the calculator. Negative 9 plus 23,608, ta-da. There you go. You get 23,599. And you're, you're home free. Here we go. So when we look at this, you're almost there. You're almost done. You've done a lot of hard work. You should be proud of this work. Let's finish strong. Because this x to the 1 has the highest degree, because there's no variable here, we actually stop. And then we just acknowledge that this bit left here is our remainder. That will be the numerator. Okay, that'll be the numerator of a fraction at the end. So I write plus 23,599. And then... The denominator of my remainder is just x plus 8. And that is it. Look at all that great work you just did. You should be proud of this. Good job. All right? So frame it up so everyone knows the great work you did. And voila. All right. 
As always, go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified when I make a new practice video for you. And if there's anything you want to practice, anything you want to see, anything you want me to create, just drop me a comment below and I'll do my best to make it for you. Alrighty, thank you. Bye.